Hello, my name is Christy Kelly, Nursing Supervisor. Your next skills review will be instructions on taking vital signs. Vital signs consist of measuring temperature, pulse, respirations, and blood pressure. When vital signs are out of range, either too high or too low, it indicates a potential health problem. It is so important for CNAs to measure accurately and report any changes with the vital signs. If you are not able to accurately measure the vital signs, it is very important that you do not report a guess or a range. Please recheck the vital signs or call on a peer or the nurse covering to accurately measure the vital signs. We are starting today with measuring body temperature. The Iowa Veterans Home utilizes two types of thermometers to measure body temperature. The infrared thermometer does not touch the body and can be used to monitor temperature by directing the infrared at the forehead. The forehead should be dry as moisture can interfere with an accurate reading. The second type of thermometer we have is a tympanic thermometer. This thermometer is inserted into the ear canal close to the tympanic membrane. There is a great blood supply to the tympanic membrane so the body temperature can accurately be measured here. We want to make sure that the ear canal is clean and clear and that there is not excessive earwax in front of the tympanic membrane as this will interfere with your reading. These two thermometers are both electric thermometers. Procedure for taking a temperature. Find an appropriate thermometer, wash your hands, knock on the resident's door, introduce yourself when they welcome you in, explain what you're going to be doing, and secure their cooperation. Once they understand what you're going to do, proceed. Using the infrared thermometer, make sure there is no hair or oil on the forehead. Turn on the thermometer by pushing the blue button on the top. Point at resident's forehead a half to one and a half inches away. Push the blue button again and it will give you the reading. Remember, this thermometer does not touch or make contact with the resident. If using a tympanic thermometer, ensure that there are covers for the probe before entering the resident room. Apply the cover to the probe Gently raise the resident's ear slightly upward and back to straighten the ear canal and allow easy insertion of the probe into the resident's ear. Press the activation button on the thermometer and wait for the beep to know that the temperature has been measured. Remove the probe and properly dispose of the cover in the trash. Record the resident's temperature on a piece of paper Report any elevated temperature to the nurse in charge. The normal temperature range will depend on the device you are using to measure temperature. For a tympanic thermometer, the normal range is between 96.6 to 99.7. While 98.6 is universally known for the normal body temperature, each person actually has their own normal body temperature. Elderly people, typically have a slightly lower body temperature. At any time a temperature reading is above 100 degrees point zero, it needs to be rechecked and then reported to the charge nurse as soon as possible. An elevated body temperature can signify presence of an infectious process, dehydration, or illness. Now we will move on to checking the pulse rate. You will need a watch with a second hand to measure pulse rate. The pulse rate, or count, is the number of time the heart beats in one minute, beats per minute. 
Pulse can be measured at several sites on the body. One of the easiest access sites is the radial pulse. This is at the wrist on the thumb side. Make sure that the resident is comfortable and relaxed because an awkward or uncomfortable position may affect the heart rate. Gently press the pads of your index and middle finger on the surface of the resident's wrist near the thumb over the radial artery. You should feel a pulse when applying moderate pressure. Excessive pressure may obstruct the blood flow and prevent you from feeling the pulse. It is important that you do not use your thumb to assess a resident's pulse because you have a pulse in your thumb. Count the heart rate for 30 seconds and multiply by two. This will give you the heart rate for a minute. If there are some irregularities, it may be necessary to count for 60 seconds, but typically you will be able to get an accurate pulse reading after 30 seconds. If a resident has had an amputation and you are not able to use the radial pulse, a pulse can also be taken at the carotid or brachial site, or an apical pulse can be taken. An apical pulse requires the use of a stethoscope. Normal pulse rate should be between 60 and 100 beats per minute. A pulse rate outside of this range should be reported as soon as possible to the charge nurse. Respiration is the final component in our vital sign set. Respiration measures the number of times a person inhales and exhales in one minute. We count inspiration and expiration as one. Several factors can influence temperature pulse and respiration. Environment, activity, exercise, food, fluids, stress, and illness all impact vital signs. One respiration is counted for each inspiration and expiration. You will see the chest rise during inspiration and fall during expiration. You will count inspiration and expiration as one for a 30 second period. You will then double your results to get respiratory rate per minute. It is routine when counting the resident's pulse to keep your hands placed after the first 30 seconds of counting pulse and then count respiration. When people are aware we are counting their breaths, many hold their breath. However, if they feel we are counting their pulse, most will breathe normally. Normal rate of respiration ensures adequate oxygenation in the body. Normal respiratory range is between 12 to 20 breaths per minute. Blood pressure is a measurement of the force of the blood within the arteries. It is measured as a fraction. The first number, or top number, is the systolic reading. It measures the pressure when the heart contracts. The second number, or bottom number, is the diastolic reading. It measures the pressure when the heart is at rest. Blood pressure can be taken manually or with an automated device. If measuring manually, you will use a stethoscope and blood pressure cuff. It is very important to select the proper size of a blood pressure cuff. Using a blood pressure cuff that is too small or too large can affect an accurate reading. The bladder of the blood pressure cuff should cover 80% of the upper arm. This will prevent false low or false high readings. Evaluate if your resident has been at rest for at least five minutes before measuring the blood pressure. If you are getting a complete set of vitals, start with temperature, pulse, and respiration as this will allow the five minute pause that is needed. It is best if your resident has not had any cigarettes or caffeine for 30 minutes prior to checking the blood pressure. The resident should be seated or supine with the head of the bed at a comfortable level. Explain to the resident that you need them to not move or talk 
when measuring blood pressure. This is because blood pressure increases with talking or movement. Make sure the resident is relaxed and comfortable so that we will get an accurate reading. With the resident's palm facing upward, wrap the deflated cuff snugly around the resident's upper arm so that the bottom edge of the cuff is 3 fourths to 1 and 1 quarter inch above the elbow bend. Line up the arrow or the indicator on the cuff so it is positioned over the artery. You should still be able to slide two fingers in between the blood pressure cuff and the resident's upper arm. One very important point is making sure that you are familiar with your resident and any conditions they may have or have a history of. If you are not familiar with the resident, please review the care plan for any directions regarding taking blood pressure. Do not apply the blood pressure cuff over a central venous line or IV access. Make sure you do not measure blood pressure in an extremity that has been affected by lymphedema or after a mastectomy or lumpectomy. This will cause complications with their lymphatic circulation. Do not take a blood pressure over a hemodialysis shunt or fistula as that will impede blood flow through this device and may prevent using it for future dialysis. Once the blood pressure cuff has been applied to the upper arm and has been adjusted to fit snugly, place the stethoscope earpieces in your ears. Feel or palpate for the brachial pulse at the inner elbow. When you can feel the pulse, place the bell of the stethoscope over this area. Gently close the valve on the bulb and then pump up the cuff by squeezing the bulb. At approximately 160, listen for a pulse. If not heard, slowly begin to release the air in the cuff by turning the valve open. As you watch the dial and slowly release the air, listen for sound over the artery. When you hear the first beat or tapping sound, note the reading on the dial. This will be the systolic or top number. Continue to slowly release the air and listen until you hear the last sound. When you hear the last sound, note the dial reading. This is your diastolic or bottom number. Once you have the diastolic number, release the remaining air in the blood pressure cuff by opening the valve completely. Record your reading immediately, remove the blood pressure cuff, Examine your resident's skin. Perform your hand hygiene before exiting the resident room. Remember to sanitize all equipment before returning to storage. As the caregiver, your skills and knowledge directly impact the resident. You spend the most time with the resident. Your observations and care can directly impact the resident's status. Recognizing any part of vital signs out of range for our residents and reporting promptly to the nurse allows immediate addressing of changing condition and interventions to be implemented which impact the resident's status. Marked change in a resident's vitals outside of normal range can indicate a serious illness. Being able to address at onset improves a resident's chance to recover. Please take the time to measure accurately vital signs for residents in your care. Thank you for your attention to this skills review. Promptly, which will. Um, you said promptly. I know. It's really important to be prompt. Okay.